Once again, ladies and gentlemen, live around the world on zone from your Nitzvah Auditorium, Nashville, Tennessee. This is the main event of the evening. Four rounds in this four-way survivor bout at a catch weight, 165 pounds. It is presented by Misfit Boxing and DAZN. Sponsored by Prime Energy, where great flavor meets function. And Stake Betting America's Social Casino. The three judges scoring this bout at ringside. Brando Eaton, BJ Flores, and Ricky Ray Taylor. And when the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Danny Ziemba. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready, the fighters are ready, the world is ready. Nashville, make some noise if you are ready! <laughs> Introducing to you first, Wearing black with orange, weighing officially 158 and one half pounds, from Montreal, Canada, here is Ryan Johnston! <laughs> Introducing next, wearing white with orange, he weighed in 164 pounds even. In Tennessee orange tonight, representing Long Beach, California, here is In the blue corner tonight, wearing white with blue, he weighed in 164 and three quarter pounds. From London, England, here is Swartz! And our final fighter tonight in the Survivor Throwdown, wearing purple with black, he weighed in 162 and three quarter pounds. From the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California, here is Nick Le And your first fighters in the ring tonight, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Johnston and Swarms. Everybody, all boxes, all boxes. All boxes, come in. All right, all your trunks are looking good. Remember, protect yourselves at all times. Listen to my commands at all times. Any questions of me, boxers or seconds? Y'all touch gloves, come out swinging. Okay. Let's go. So here we go, four men enter, only one man leaves. Did you notice something yeah. during the introductions swarms cool calm doing nothing the other three moving around bouncing around all right so here's the two men that will start the fight it's going to be swarms versus johnson what do you think roundhouse honestly this is big starting is not great when the other two guys get to rest hang out and then come in and try to beat the crap out of you round one scheduled for four we don't know what's going to happen if you go down you're out so I'm starting fast. Getting on and getting that jab active. A lot of happy feet for Ryan Johnson. Now I wonder, Coach, is these two guys getting to get a bit warm to start? Going to be an advantage once the other guys get tagged in because they might have to warm up and they're going to be going against a warm opponent. It's it, really, really tough it, to it's, say. It's rare that you make a good point, but I think that was a really, really <laughs> good one. If I'm the third guy in, that's something I seriously have to look at. Stay on the outside and get that sweat going. Absolutely. <laughs> lots of feints early, lots of punches not landing. Yeah, why even throw a punch from that far out? You're missing by two feet. Yeah, swoop. Tag, tag. All right, here comes Nickel now on B-Day. Watch out for B-Day. Okay. He comes right at you. Here he comes. Oh, nice left hook by Nick Laval. B-Day has one gear, and that is full throttle. But Nick Laval is doing great, keeping the distance and tagging him. Stop, stop, he doesn't stop. seem like the kind of guy to me stop. to Bring tag himself back. Bring step back. Absolutely. Bring back B-Day. Now, I'm curious, are they all going to try to tag simultaneously? <laughs> nice analysis, Coach. Hey, that's why I'm here, kid. That's why I'm here. Next level. Next level. So Johnson back in again as Nick Laval's trunks say, shock the world. Oh! Good movement from Ryan Johnston here. Good head movement, good feet. 
He's so much quicker than what I remember from two years ago. Now, if I remember correctly, he has a weight disadvantage. But sometimes you have a weight disadvantage, you have a speed advantage. Oh, good jab there from Nick Lamal, who's going to tag Swarm back in. And here comes B.D. Very interesting. And it's almost like these four bucks made an agreement. Let's all get in in the first round and fill each other out. Oh. Hey, Swarm's letting those hands go. Stop, stop, stop. Very clean. The judges are going to have their job cut out for them. This is going to be incredibly difficult to judge. Swarm's is on. And we're talking about getting warm. Swarm's is warm right now. Something that's going to be important here, guys, is managing that cardio, right? It's, you might think that, oh, I can just tag out whenever I get tired, but the human body doesn't recover immediately. You can't just go all out every time. You still have to box. Look at Nick. It's almost like he's enjoying Ten seconds. Well, he's just letting swarms burn off that energy. Now let's see if he can throw a punch and catch him with a counter. Punching a guard is less tiring than missing, and Swarms, frankly, he's missing most of these punches. He's just a tiny bit too far away. So it's B. Dave and Nick Lamal again, and let's see if B. Dave does better this time. Let's go, come on. Come on. And this is what I'm talking about. It takes so much time to make these changes. Pause that clock, and then there's no issue. Let him go, box. Box out, guys, box. Now what seems stop, to be happening stop, stop, is stop. they're they're changing stop, almost stop, so stop, consistently stop, that they're kind of fighting the same people. But what they're not realizing is you might have a better advantage against someone else that can get you more points on the scorecard. So you want to not fight the same guy over and over again, right? And if they follow the rules, see that shouldn't happen. You're not allowed to hit to tag the same guy in twice. Oh, that's a good point, coach. Yeah. Well, you like to see more. B, B Dave's losing points by making all these tags. And in my opinion, Nick LaBelle's the hero so far, but Johnson just landed a good right hand. Box yeah, out, Nick's winning this fight. Right clean, box, box. And that's what I'm saying, right? Nick is winning this fight, and he's fought B Dave a lot, but maybe it's best for him to fight Brian Johnson. Maybe he gets more points that way, right? You don't know. Big right hand from Johnson. You know, Nick Lamal looks like he's in great shape, too. Not breathing hard. And Chris, he's the only one that's not doing the all extra energy thing that the other three are doing. Ryan Johnson is doing a good job. Oh! Throw, throw four punches, though. He doesn't throw one, two. And it's the third or fourth that lands. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's it. Back to your corners. Swarms and Ryan. Right. right. That's why I said, ask him, because now it's looking like a tag team. Ask him for the tag. All right. But I want you to run it. I want you, I want you on Ryan's and Swarms' ass. I want you on. If one of them come in, you ask for the tag. You wanna, you want Ryan or Swarms. 
Because you're going to look the best against Swarm or Ryan, all right? Keep using the jab. Push him back. Look, he's going to come. He's going to come to you. Bring him onto the right hand. Bring him onto the right hand. They just told me that's what it was. So let's look at our highlights, and it was a nice scrap between Nick and Ryan. Ryan got that right hand in, there. Come on, and then guys. Nick caught him with one of his own. Yeah, those two did a really, really good job. And remember, there's 10 points, 9 points, 8 points. So right now, we have no idea where this fight is on the scorecard. But I'll tell you this, Chris. B. Dave in his corner, his trainer said, hey, if Swarms or Ryan is in there, ask for the tag. I want to see you against one of those two. Both of them are in right now. It's interesting that B. Dave doesn't want any of Nick Lamal, who many thought would be perhaps the, the easiest fighter in this. That's right. Good right hand from Swarms. I will say Swarms, what I like about him is anytime he's in the ring, he's going 100%. He's trying to make the most of his time in the ring. And that's what they all have to start doing to get those points to make sure they're racking up the scorecard. They gotta go 100% while they're in there because they're not getting that much ring time to really be able to make a statement. This is, this is what B-Day's trainer did not want to see. Yeah, that's the same trainer that earlier told Chase Tamora, hold on. I don't think you want to listen to him. Step yeah, back. good point. Stop, stop. Very good point. Don't listen to the referee, remember that? Something that's... Come on. And Lamal's, Lamal's got a slight cut Come over on. the eye. And the referee's got the worst ponytail in the business. <laughs> Just a side note. Hanging on for dear life. That's why you're the best play-by-play -play man in the business. Ricky. Just cut it off already. I gotta be honest with you, if I'm one of these guys and I'm in there in the third round or fourth round, I'm not tagging out, period. I'm going for the win. Bag those points, exactly, right? None of them are putting a stamp on it. And like I said, four guys are going in and one guy is winning. You gotta really prove that you're winning. Stop, stop, stop. Step back, step back, step back now. Who do you think now. is winning right now, Roundhouse? I have to give go. it, honestly, at this point, Round two, I thought it was Nick Lamal, but now I'm starting to think it's either Ryan Johnston or Swarms. He tagged. You're in. Bucks. Well, Ryan wanted no part of this, but he's going to get all of it. Oh, yeah, B. Dave going down low. He's trying to work that body. He likes to put his forehead on your chest and bang away. There you go, I would say when B. Dave is in there, he is making the most of it. He's going 100 percent. He's just not in there long enough. He'll tag himself out after like 30 seconds. And I want to see him stay in for a little bit longer than that. Whenever you see something new like a survivor tag, the fighters aren't going to necessarily know what to do. I think the strategy for all four, to be honest, has been atrocious. And honestly, if they just paused that clock and, and it just gave it a couple extra seconds to, to make sure everything was moving a bit more smoothly, I think it'd make a big difference. But now, now like we're saying, Swarms is doing well. And when he comes in here, he throws a lot of punches and he throws in combination. He's been missing a lot as well, but he's still the only one that's really putting on a ton of volume whenever he's in there. A little bit stained from Swarms. He wanted more of Nick. But he is lighting up E. Dave there. That'll do it for round three. That was a fast round. It sure was. So it should be Ryan Johnson and Nick Lamal that start the board. Sit down, sit down, sit down, listen to me. You know what I want to see? I want to see selfishness. I want to see one of these four say, this is my night. This is my fight. This is my main event. You don't come all the way here like Swarms did from London or from California and not be selfish in the fourth round. And that's the thing is this is not tag team. This is just survivor tag. And the thing is, is that's what I was saying, right? When B-Day was in there with Swarms, Swarms was lighting them up. He's getting those points. If I'm Swarms, I'm staying in with that guy as long as I possibly can. Well, take a look at some of the highlights from the third round. And Swarms was really getting after B-Dave. And it was at this point that B-Dave said, you know what, I don't want any more. And let's remember, Grish, it was B-Dave's corner that told him, hey, we think you'd be look good against Swarms. Not so much. Well, that, that, that corner is really just not making a great name for itself. Hey, the first of our four overtime fight nights starts with Elijah Pierce and Mike Planilla. August 4th, live on DeZone, and here comes B-Day. Oh, wow. Here you go, box, guys, box. What a blast box by B-Day. That is 
sweat went right into the crowd. Box. Box out, stop holding. When B. Dave lands, he absolutely blasts these guys. He's not gonna knock down, but he's getting absolutely cracked and then immediately jumping out of there. I mean, strategically, it's a good idea, but you, you, there's no way you're winning on the judges' scorecards with that strategy. Yeah, if every time you take a big punch, you tag out. If I'm a judge, you're getting an egg, brother. That's exactly right, and then that's what right now Pete Dave is facing, so there's no chance of, in my opinion, him winning this fight right now. And coach, we're talking about being selfish. You made a great point there because I kind of forgot about Ryan Johnson in that last round. How often was he even in the in the ring there, right? Very much. So he's now really got to make sure to make up for that and be, like you said, a little bit selfish. Although he just got tagged by Swarms, who is, in my opinion, now starting to run away with this a little bit. Well, from an entertainment factor, from a tag, tag. Oh, B Day doing. B Day gets more than Nick Lamar. I don't know if he wants him, but he's getting him. I will say there, like Swarms, he's doing great. He's getting a bunch of points in. He should have stayed in. You only got a minute left in this fight. Well, this thing may be so close that if we see one knockdown, that may be enough. No, B-Day wants no part of it. He, he was getting tagged out. I'm, I'm not sure why Nick gets upset and he doesn't have to tag out. Instructions to Nick Lamel like him in his corner. <laughs> Under 45 seconds to go here. Who's gonna win this last moment of the fight? Some good forward aggression from Johnston. Break clean, break clean. Box. I think Ryan Johnston's done the least. B. Dave has looked the worst. Yeah, I think it would be it would be Swarms, Nick, Ryan, and then B. Dave in that order, in my opinion. I think so. Totally agree. Now, I will say though, I, I I don't like Swarms getting out with 30 seconds left. Right? Go in, make a statement. Right? And the longer you stay in, the more time you steal from your opponents as well. Right? No doubt. They're gonna watch us back. seconds and he might have stolen that from everyone else. Amazing. Well, we'll see how the judges have it, Roundhouse. It's going to be interesting to see how Joe Martinez calls out these scores, too. A very peculiar thing that's about to happen. We've never seen it before. Honestly, and with two, three, four, five more seconds left in that round, Nick Lamal might have actually got an official knockdown, which would have officially eliminated Ryan Johnston. But I mean, he got very, very lucky with the bell on that one. What do you think at home? Who do you have winning this? I think we got it right in between either Swarms or Nick Lamal for the winner of this fight. But we'll well, have to find if, out. if you look at damage, I mean, Nick Lamal almost had Ryan Johnson out of there. He, net, he landed some big shots against B. Dave. I don't remember Swarms having anybody in real trouble, although he did look good. That's a great point. I mean, he had B. Dave in trouble a few times, and maybe that's going to look good in the judges' scorecards. But every time Nick Lamau was in there, he was landing big shots. Now, the same thing I can say is I didn't see Swarms get hit too much, whereas I did see Nick Lamau get hit a few times. So it really depends. Are they going to value defense over, over, you know, accumulative fighting in the ring and it's it's so difficult to judge a fight like this but either way Nick Lamau and Swarms both did amazingly and I just went Ryan Johnson spent more time in that ring yeah and you know B Dave in my opinion if he wants to be successful in this bit he's got to be more than a one-trick pony he comes in there goes hard for 20 30 seconds and then he, he's out of ideas exactly and once he's out of ideas it, it just seems like he doesn't go to the next step. He doesn't start using his jab. He doesn't start circling. He just goes harder forward 
with the right hand yeah. the same way. And sometimes that works. Against novice boxers, that works. He can overwhelm them. But Nick Lamal showed some skills. Swarms showed some skills, and they weren't uh, they weren't pressured into making bad decisions. Exactly, and that's so much part of B. Dave's game is to force you into the brawl. But in a situation like this where they can just tag out of the brawl and yeah, say, oh, exactly. actually, I'll, I'll come back to this in a second. Oh, you brought a knife to a gunfight? Come out. Yeah. Send me to Mars for a second. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're almost done with Misfits, but not influence or crossover boxing. One of the OGs, Jake Paul, take it out of the arena. Hey, Diaz, fight me. Krim Della Krim right here, I'm coming for you. There's a lot of hate. Let's find out who's the better fighter. Anthony Joshua! It's a right hand, and down goes Hula. Oh! Watch him with a huge uppercut. Delia Cruz! Delia Cruz! Delia Cruz! Delia Cruz! That's some real heavy hitting from Dillian White. Some beautifully tight punches being thrown here. He, he is that good. Zone boxing is on, and Joe Martinez's mic is on. He has the scores. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds, we go to the scorecards, and here is the winning total. Totally 117 points. Your winner from Los Angeles, California, Nick Le two-piece combo to Ryan Johnson. Absolutely fantastic. I gotta say, we all won because Survivor Tag was way more exciting than I expected it to be. And like you said, awesome for Nick Lamau to have tons of moments but be super, super consistent throughout the fight. And I think that's what got him the win. Obviously, that last moment was fantastic, but it's consistent.